So, question five from the June 2008 Canix paper. Um, I've moved the diagram around slightly, but this is the diagram. It's the question here. Two forces are acting on uh, a particle here. And the force has a magnitude of 15. Well, let's add this information straight away to our diagram. So always, always, always draw a diagram for mechanics. In this case, they tell us that the force P up here is 15 newtons. So let's add that 15. And we're told that the force acting to the right Q is X. So let's add that going over here. As if we're, and the resultant of P and Q. So we could, in theory, replace this P and Q with a single force acting somewhere in this direction, and that force would be the force, the resultant force R, where we know that the angle of R is 50 degrees. So all this diagram actually, although we draw a diagram on here, we can see that R and we can see that the 15 aren't acting in the ways that we want really, horizontal and vertical are ideal ways. So let's draw these forces out again. So the 15 force, which is there, we can break into a vertical component and a horizontal component as such. So 15 is the hypotenuse. This angle down here is obviously 30 degrees, because if we take the 30, we get the whole 180. And with the components are then the adjacent is the 15 cosine of that 30, that's the horizontal component acting to the left, and the vertical component acting up is obviously 15 sine 30 degrees. It's not the only force that's not acting the way we want it. So actually, force R is acting in this direction. Again, that could be broken up into its vertical component, horizontal component. This time we know the angle is 50 degrees and the hypotenuse acting this direction, so to the right and up is R, and that gives us the opposite as R sine 50 and the horizontal component to the right as R cosine 50. So that's broken up the things that we need. Now, I haven't even started to ask the question, but we're going to use this, and this is worth marking your exam, and it's a really good reference. We can look at the horizontal and vertical components easily from our diagram. So if we consider R, well, just before we do that, actually, we need to just remind ourselves that P plus Q is equal to R. Then the resultant is these two added together. Okay. So looking at part A, if we resolve in the vertical direction, we resolve in the vertical direction, we're not going to have anything to do with Q, which is good because this is an unknown force here. So if we resolve vertically, what we're going to get is, remembering that P plus Q must be equal R, um, we're going to get that the vertical component of P is this, 15 sine 30. 15 sine 30 must be the same as the vertical component of R acting up here. It must be the same as R sine 50. So we can rearrange that quite easily, just divide both sides by sine 50. So we get R using our calculator, 9.790555467. Or, well, and importantly, I'm gonna keep that on my calculator. But a rounded answer I'm going to write down is 9.79 newtons to three significant figures. But I am keeping the answer on my calculator. Well, if I resolve vertically for part A, and presumably for part B, I'm going to have to resolve horizontally. So let's look at this, the value of x in this case. So this time we do want this. So we're going to resolve horizontally. If we resolve to the right as positive, we know that x is acting to the right. What's acting to the left is a horizontal component here of this force 15, is p-force, which is the 15 cos 30. 
Now this force is not really here, it's just an imaginary force, but this R is the resultant. So those two together must be the same as this one vertical component, R sine 50 degrees here. So again, rearranging, well we know what R is, so we can just rearrange and we can say X is this plus this, because we're going to move it to the side. And it's very important I'm going to be using the answer button for my calculator. So it's going to be answer button times sine 50 plus 15 times cos 30. Do that all on my calculator. I can get 19.2836289. Again, I can round this. 19.3 newtons to three significant figures. So I'm actually just to reiterate, this idea of getting the force diagram right gets it straight in your head, but also allows you to draw these force triangles with the two right angle triangles that break the nasty forces, the ones that are acting at angles, not into horizontal and vertical components, which makes actually, when we come to answer the questions, A and B, makes our life a lot easier. And this is actually worth the four marks and the five marks. Doesn't seem very much, but this is not very much when you've got this and this here. Okay.